This morning, I have the honor, and we all have the honor, to receive our guest and to have him come and share the word. Um, I did mention, I think I met him 38 plus years ago in Dallas, Texas, and uh, we've used a word around here that we're trying to live up to and live into, and that is, one word is world changer. And I see Mark Geppert functioning as an apostolic leader in the area of prayer, discipling, church planting, all of those kinds of things. And I would definitely give him the label of world changer. Now, God wants all of us to be world changers right where we are, okay? We all know that. The other thing is, uh, one of the things we've said, and we're, I'm not sure if we're presumptuous in this, I think we just have a kingdom understanding that we want to see God raise up in this church, to start with anyways, 300 world-class leaders. And maybe we'll even change that to world-class slash kingdom-class leaders. And um, knowing this man over the years and all that he's impacted and all the revelation that he's imparted and the activation of co-laborers in the kingdom that he has activated and sent out and partnered with in nations that he has touched, um, that, that title uh, is very appropriate. And we're just humbled and we're honored. Would you stand with me and melt welcome again, Mark Geppert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Well, that's the most, most welcomes I've had in some time. I'm sort of getting used to it. Thank you. And uh, thank you for the basket. Man, somebody fixed me up this really neat basket. Whoever fixed it up. What do you think went first? Do you think the peppermint patties went first or do you think that the Oreos went first? <laughs> Actually, it was the popcorn. The popcorn went first. With, Thank you so much. I just bypassed the fruit. The fruit's still in the basket. You know? <laughs> anyway, it's a joy. It's Sunday. That means it's church. We're together. Thank God we're together. It's, it's just so wonderful to be in the United States where the church can freely, should they choose to, gather together and worship the Lord. I've worked for many years behind what well, we used to be a bamboo curtain. We worked in underground China, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, then across Siberia, and then into carrying Bibles throughout the Soviet Union, outer Mongolia, riding the, riding the train, doing the distributions, meeting the underground churches, and facing the persecution. I was in Poland the last time the Russians were there praying with the bishop of the church at Black Madonna, the Chestahova, home church of John Paul II, and in, included in a solidarity mass there where the bishop of Chestahova broke every tradition the Catholic church has ever had and served the Eucharist to this blatantly Pentecostal pastor. And all the 120 priests that he had assembled to see that gasped a little bit because we had just trashed centuries of dogma. And, uh, and then he said this, that it was the Light and Life Fos and Zoe movement and 20 or 50,000 university age young people in Poland had received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Man, they were on fire, and they were being discipled with materials from Youth with a Mission that were being brought in from Western Europe into Poland and had underground meetings. I, I did uh, three weeks of traveling in the daytime and doing underground meetings with these young people about the future and destiny of their country. And their big question was, could they be married and serve God? Because the only witness they had were, were priests and nuns. And like many young people on a college campus, they were not at all interested in being priests or nuns. And so the bishop had authenticated that you could be, you could be married, you could be a father or a mother and still love and serve Jesus Christ, which smashed another dogma. So on that day, he said to them, so you are the ones who have received the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm so glad that you have. 
Only 25,000 of them could fit in the garden there. So only half of the movement got to come. And he addressed them in this way. He said, I'm so glad you've received the Holy Spirit. He said, first you have to realize that the Spirit is holy. And then he is spirit. So since you have the Holy Spirit, I will expect the prostitution to leave Poland because of your anointing. I'll expect drug addiction and alcoholism to leave Poland because of your receiving the Holy Spirit in your generation. And then it was a, a solidarity mass, you understand. He said, and I will expect our unbelieving brethren from the East, that would be the Russians, to go back home because you have received the Holy Spirit. I am more than sure that somewhere in the Ukraine today, somebody is praying in the Spirit and binding those spirits that are driving Putin to madness and driving the Russians back home again. And I believe that it will happen, and I believe we'll hear about it soon. I do. I truly do. I can tell you the name. Oftentimes when I do prayer walking seminars, I talk about spiritual warfare. People want to know the name. What is the name of the controlling spirit in this middle Ohio Valley? Or what is the name of the, the stronghold? Or what is the name of the prevailing spirit in the United States today? And as an expert on this subject, I feel a responsibility to share that with you. So if you'd like to write this down, you can say I said it. The name of the prevailing spirit in the United States of America today is the Holy Spirit. If you're disappointed in that as an intercessor, we need to have a chat after church. I'll let you buy me lunch and I'll explain that to you. But if we lose sight of the fact that God is in control and in command, we have lost sight of everything. We are his people, set apart by his blood, set apart by his name. We are called Christians. That is to say, we are born again by the spirit of Jesus Christ. Except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said it to Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, how can that be? How can a man re-enter the womb and be born again? Jesus said, no, I'm talking to you about spiritual Rebirth, the person who you were, the person who you used to be, the person who was addicted to your addictions, the person who was driven by your desires, the person who was controlled by other spirits, that person has to die. You have to be born again. Otherwise, you're not going to see it. You got a bunch of talking heads that are so far away from God, none of them ever born again. They could not describe to you one speck of the kingdom of God because they haven't received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. They are not filled with the Holy Ghost. And yet we let them determine our attitude. We receive from them information upon which we allow our emotions to run. We are lifted up or we are put down by the babbling of an idiot who does not have the good sense to bow the knee to the only one worthy to open the seal and open the scroll. The only one who has risen from the dead. The only one who has truly conquered death and the grave. So how do you really feel about it, Mark? Well, as I get older, I find myself shouting more and being a little crabbier, so please put up with me, if you will. It's, I don't really hurt anywhere. I'm just, I'm just totally freaked out by those who just forget who they are. Many years ago, I was in the nation of Cambodia. We were prayer walking, and I, was, I had the thought, you know... Cambodia had just had a civil war. It was destroyed. The roads were destroyed. Schools were destroyed. Pol Pot had killed 50% of the population of the country. Of the 50% that then he didn't kill, half of that group had been able to get out. So they had gone to refugee camps in Thailand or they had escaped to other countries. They'd become boat people. And there in the rubble and the turmoil, the post-war period, I was walking and praying for the nation. And the thought occurred to me, you should do something about education. 
Now, I was thrown out of a very, very good college. I was handed over to the Pennsylvania State Police who felt that discipline was what I needed, and so I was immediately inducted into the service of our nation. They said I wouldn't last in jail, see if I could last in Vietnam. That's back in the day when we had ways of handling things. I have no degree. The only title I have I gave to myself. I went to a non-degree granting Bible school. I'm neither an intellectual giant, nor am I a total schmuck. <laughs> but on my release from the military service, coming back home on May 22nd of 1970, I came to know Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And I was marrying the, my childhood sweetheart. We met when we were 14 set to be married, so when you're set to be married, guess what you do? You go to work, right? Gentlemen, right? You go to work. And so I just went to work. Eventually I was called into ministry. I went to a little church-related Bible school and then from there into Latin America, which I'm going back to on Tuesday. But along the way, I got into Cambodia, and I was praying. It was probably 19, uh, let me see, 94 I started in Cambodia. So this would have been around 1996. Uh, Pol Pot had not yet been terminated, so there was still a war on and so forth. But the, the group, there was a group of people trying to rebuild their country. And so on a spur, I said to the, my host, Please call the Ministry of Education. I'd like to talk to the Minister of Education of the nation. He looked at me. He said, hey, that, he, uh, yeah, Mark, this is a cabinet position in a government of a country. Why would he want to talk to you? I said, you tell him that there is a fat, holy man from America who wants to talk to him about education. He'll see me. Well, sure enough, that afternoon they said, yes, yeah, sure. Well, we panicked. We had to go through the marketplace to try to find a proper white shirt that I could put on with a tie. In Cambodia, you had to buy two shirts. And so to cover this, and no Cambodian that is so endowed as I am. Come on. <laughs> so finally, we gave it up, and I wore my plaid shirt. We went, and we went to see him. His name was Im Seti, and he was the Minister of Education of Cambodia. He said, I... I I've, want to talk with you about education. I said, okay, fine, let's talk education. What? He said, well, we're in a shambles. Uh, Pol Pot killed every educated person, anybody who wore glasses, anybody with a degree, especially anybody who had gone to school in the United States. He destroyed education so that he could dominate the people, so that he would have a people that would no longer think for themselves, but they would be totally dominated and do whatever he bid them to do. He said, there are 10 of us now who have formed this government, and we're trying to rebuild our nation, and I need help in education. Now, at that time, he said, the United States is the number one country in education in the world. I said, okay. And when I received your request to talk about education, I thought, perhaps you might be able to help us. And I said, well, I think we can. I, I think SEAPC, I think we can help you with education. But you have to give me Jesus. I said, you see, the only thing I know is Jesus. I know that with Christ I can do all things, but without him I can do nothing. He said, well, what is it that made schools so great in the United States. Why did the United States, a relatively young country, become the world leader in education? I said, well, sir, that's, that's pretty simple, really, actually. In every school, at the beginning of every day, before anything was taught or said, someone led the entire student population, faculty, and administration in a prayer that will cause you to prosper. And every student in every school 
said this same prayer. Really? I said, yes. And that was the key to greatness in America. Well, what's the prayer? He said, of course, he's very curious. There's a prayer that causes you to prosper. Come say it with me. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Minister of Education of the nation of Cambodia said to me, do you really believe that you can transform Cambodia with that prayer? I said, with every fiber of my being, I believe. So he allowed me four villages, or yeah, eight villages, eight villages, 4,000 students from first to eighth grade, a totally Buddhist or secularist faculty and administration, and said, let me see. Yes, you can do it your way. We took that prayer, laminated it, downloaded it in Khmer, the Khmer language, laminated it, gave it to every teacher, said, you need to know this by the beginning of the next semester. Gave it to every student, said, you'll need to know this, you need to memorize it, it's not that long. And we began the school days in this Buddhist by constitution country talking our father who is in heaven with a group of kids who hadn't the faintest idea that there was a father in heaven, who had never heard there was a father in heaven, who had no religious jargon, had no Christian upbringing, had no Christian background, had no Christian anything. And by the end of the third week, all 175 teachers had given their lives to Jesus Christ on the good news that there is a Father in heaven who will bless you. The parents saw the difference. They said, what are you doing with our kids? This is not a Buddhist chant. No, it's not. And who, what is this Father in Heaven thing? What is this Father in Heaven thing? So we had to enlarge it because they, they didn't, couldn't read. The, so we made big ones. I said, this is the prayer that caused America to prosper. And this is the prayer that will cause you to prosper. So say it every day. Say it every day. And they tacked that up in their hovels. And I'm talking hovels. They were so impoverished a war-torn nation, killing fields on one side, minefields on the other side, no hope, total despair, all of their leaders killed or thrown out of the country. And they tacked that up in those hovels, and in the morning you could hear them. Our Father, who is in heaven. They're asking, who is this Father in heaven? Come on, we get to share, there is a God, he has a son, his name is Jesus, he died for you. God loves you so much he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. That's who that is. He's a creator and sustainer of the entire universe. And you're talking to him. Direct, direct. Not with some monk in the middle, not with some priest in the middle. No, you and your father. For as many as receive him, to them he gives the power to become the sons, the children of God, as many as believe in his name. In three years' time, we received the award as the number one schools in the country of Cambodia in math, science, and English. They wouldn't give us English because they said we cheated. We had native English speakers teaching it, so it really wasn't fair to the other districts. 
basically the one that the prime minister came from. It wasn't fair to the... Uh -huh. After receiving that award, I was approached by Mr. Hun Sen, the prime minister, the dictator of Cambodia. I was approached by him through his number two. Do you think you can do on a provincial level what you did on a village level? I said, well, first of all, let's clear something up. I didn't do anything. I did not change a single person. I did not cause the crops to grow bigger. I didn't infuse a new brain in the kids. I didn't take out the rebellion. I didn't take it. No, it's the prayer. It's Jesus. God is raising up from the minefields and killing fields a generation who are Bible-based, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-filled, and academically excellent who will lead this nation into its future and destiny. I just happen to be here. You happen to be here. We happen to be here. But God, Jesus is demonstrating his resurrection power by raising up a generation. Really? What well, do you think you can do it at a, at a privilege? I said, why? He said, because Hun Sen says. Now, when Hun Sen says, whew, I mean, Hun Sen is the man in Cambodia. Hun Sen says that if you can do it at a provincial level, he will introduce you to the entire nation of Cambodia. I said, well, you tell Hun Sen I have to have Jesus. I have to have Jesus. I have no degree. I don't know anything about education. Well, I, you got to show up, read the book, and do it. I don't know anything. I'm not an educator. But if he'll give me Jesus, if I can talk about Jesus, pray with people to receive Jesus, train them in who they are, I think we can help you. He said, well, I can't just, I'm number two. He said, I'm not number one. Number one has to say, you can have Jesus. I can't say, I said, okay, fine. But I'm telling you that with Christ, I can do all things. But I'm not deceived. Without Christ, I can do absolutely nothing. So that's the deal. Two days, it took two days. Two days, Hun Sen calls. So the, the office, never, never the, of course, the prime minister, why is he going to call? Two days. You tell Pastor Mark, he can have Jesus. And if he can do in Bate Minche province of Cambodia what he did in these villages, I will introduce their program to the whole nation of Cambodia. Okay. So what is it? Nine school districts, 150,000 students on 488 campuses. Not too big. About the same size as the city of Pittsburgh schools. Not really, I mean, 150,000 children starting the day saying, Our Father, <clears throat> who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's not too much of a spiritual revolution when they come away from the Buddhas and they come away from the sacrifices and they come away from the fear and they come away from the terror and they come away from the poverty and they come away from the bondages and they come away from all the deceptions and suddenly they realize, I have a dad. I have a father that's bigger than anybody else's father. I have a father that's stronger than anybody else's father. My family, even though we've been through a war, even though we've been orphaned, even though we've been blown up, even though we have starved, people starved around us, even through that, now I know I have a father. Woo! Faith began to rise. I had to get 250 pastors. This is amazing. Some people steal sheep. I steal shepherds. I had to get 250 Cambodian pastors and indoctrinate them in the fact that it was God in them, not them in God. That it was there. You're a container, man. You're dirt. Dirt we were. Dirt we are. Dirt we will become. The highest estate of man is dirt. Dirt. And some dress nice. Some don't. Who cares? It's dirt. It's not about us. I know some people save wrapping paper. I understand that. But by and large, it's not about the wrapping paper. It's what's in the box, man. 
I've seen Christmas. Are you kidding me? My grandsons, that paper is gone in the fireplace. What's inside? In our case, who's inside? We had to re-educate these pastors. They thought they had to do it. You had to do it, man. You're a witness. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be a witness. A witness of someone who sees something happen and says what happens. You're a witness. Be a witness. Don't try to be the person making it happen. You cannot make it happen. But you can witness it. And you can proclaim to the world what you saw happen. And Bate Minche province, the poorest province in Cambodia, became number one in math, science, STEM, STEM and STEAM, even the arts, English. We became the leaders of the nation. And Hun Sen, just as COVID was breaking out in his nation, which, by the way, didn't touch us, because why? We had already gone to online education. So our education programs can be received by any kid with a smartphone in Cambodia, and we have 175% connectivity in Cambodia. So we continue to educate in the name of Jesus. Doesn't matter what, you make your policy, do whatever, do whatever. It, it, we never tell kids to put away their smartphones, my God. You can connect to us with your smartphone. Don't lose it. Don't lose your charger. Don't, you, hang on to that thing. And so Ms. Rahunsen stood publicly and said, the future and destiny of Cambodia is being determined by the things that we are learning through SEAPC. And he stood up one of our orphan kids, someone you have supported as a church, stood him up and said, this is the face of the new Cambodia. Orphaned, HIV AIDS killed both parents. Dropped on our doorstep, preschool age. Now, master's degree, MBA, MDiv, the CEO of Southeast Asia Prayer Center in Cambodia, and the face of the emerging nation. All things are possible to him who believes. The only restraint we have as Christians are self-imposed. 90% of the stress we feel as Christians are self-imposed. We just don't believe. The topic was power prayer, right? I have never found a prayer so powerful as the one that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, help me again. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. There's no doubt that there is a sifting going on. There is no doubt that since this nation rejected that prayer in 1962 and said to our Father in heaven, we aren't talking to you anymore. We're not going to train our children to talk to you. We're not going to teach them that your authority is sovereign over authority in the schools. We're not going to have administrators acknowledge your higher authority before the day begins. We're going to try to go it on our own. We're not talking to you. And also, we're not going to read your book. We're just not going to read your book. So we are basically, as a nation, rejecting you. How's that working out for us? How is that working out for us? It's chaos. Nine people in black robes determining when life begins. Next, they'll determine when life ends. 
Are you kidding me? The moral ethical code of a nation being set by who can shout the loudest in the streets? That's chaos. That's confusion. Why do we have it? Because we rejected Jesus. We rejected God. We ain't talking to you, and we ain't reading your word. And we're going to try to raise up a generation without talking to you and without your word. How's that working out? If we look in Luke chapter 22 and verse 31, the disciples were going into a time of chaos. They were going into a time where the one who had raised Lazarus from the dead, the one who had walked on the water, the one who had multiplied the loaves and the fishes, the one of whom John the Baptist had said, this is your king, this is, your, this is the one, he's going to lead us to our new destiny. This is the one, and they are about to see him be crucified, dead, and buried. And from their evidences, we would say they were clueless. Even though he told them he would rise on the third day, unbelief was in the land. They hadn't heard it. Some of them didn't even believe it when he came back to them. Peter was bold, we find in Luke 22, bold to say, hang on, Lord, we're going to fight for you. Hang on, Lord, I'm going to, I'll, I'll die for you. I'll die for you. Jesus said this, it's an amazing statement, verse 31, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, notice he did not say Peter, Peter, he said Simon, 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 he called him by his earthly name, Peter is not operating in a heavenly realm, Peter is not operating by revelation, he's operating by emotion, he's operating by declaration of his own emotion and intent, but he does not have a Holy Ghost amen on what he's saying. So Jesus addresses him, Simon, Simon. Even after saying, you will have a name change, you will be called Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. But now, in this dialogue, he's calling him Simon because he's acting earthly, so he gets addressed earthly. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you. Now there's a shockeroo. What do you mean Satan has asked for him? The only other one in the Bible Satan ever asked for was Job to test his faith, saying that your, his faith was not strong enough to hold on to the Lord when all calamity came around him. But Job proved his faithfulness to the Lord. So here at the beginning of the next, the New Testament era, here comes Peter, the first being tested. Satan has asked for you. The word you here is plural. Plural. He's talking to the group of disciples and he's saying through Peter in this dialogue, Satan is going to sift all of you. All of you. My God, if the last three years has not sifted all of us, what will it take? We have been tested. We have been tried. There's more to come. In the nation, you read it. You read the Old Testament. The nation that says, I'm not talking to you anymore, God. The nation that says, I'm not reading your book anymore. The nation that rejects God goes into captivity. When the devil wanted to bring down the United States, what did he go for first? Nukes? Nope. Economy? Nope. What did he go for? Prayer and the word. How important is prayer and the word? It's so important that that's where the devil struck to bring down a generation. We're not ignorant of his devices. It even got to the point you don't hear this prayer in Christian homes. You don't hear this prayer in Christian churches. I will be speaking in a public high school in about two weeks up in northern Pennsylvania. 
They've risked it. We all got in trouble the last time I spoke there. The entire high school gave their lives to Jesus Christ. It's been four years. Now the junior highs are all in high school. They've risked it for me to come again. They may get fired over this one. And I'm going to ask them to pray the prayer. And they're not going to know it. And the few Christian kids in that school that might have heard it or might know it are going to be under tremendous pressure to not say a word Let's say face persecution. The teachers are going to get very nervous. It's going to be an awkward moment. I am a creator of awkward moments. Hallelujah. It's going to be a little bit awkward for you all, but just relax. We'll get through it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I asked the teacher. I said, Pammy, you know, you can get fired for this. She said, Mark, they didn't fire me last time. And really, I'm ready to retire. So I frankly don't really care if I get fired this time. So come on, man. Come on up here. Let's shake them up again. I said, okay, all right. We'll get, you know, we're going to go. They've allowed it. She said, with new principal, new administration. They don't know you from anybody. I said, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Wonderful. Let's go make them feel squirmy in their seats a little bit, huh? All of you. He said, I'm going to sift all of you. And then verse 32. And this is the verse. We have to cling to this verse. Four words. But I have prayed. But I have prayed. In my time growing up among all the intercessors, we went through a phase where every famous minister had to have their number one intercessor. This is whoever, whoever, whoever is my number one intercessor. It was my number one intercessor. Well, my number one intercessor until she went to heaven was my mother. Are you kidding me? When I rebelled, grew long hair, started doing dope, got thrown out of college, got inducted into the military, it was my mother's prayers that kept me alive and brought me back to Jesus Christ. Are you kidding? And her little Thursday morning ladies, her little intercessors, they never raised their voice above a whisper. They would think that it was horrendous to shout at God. Are you kidding me? But there as they huddled together and they just whispered their prayers in reverence before the Lord, I know he heard. But my number one intercessor, according to uh, Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 and Romans chapter 8 and verse 34, forever lives at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me. Why worry? Jesus is praying for me. Gunpoint, the book's in the back. You can read the book if you'd like to, A Faith to Die For that I wrote. USA Today reported that four missionaries ran for cover in a police station in Indonesia when a mob of radical Muslims came to kill them. We didn't run to the station. We were already at the station when the radical Muslims came to kill us. And they burned the station and they burned our car and they burned a police car. They cut the wires. They had to send in the Indonesian commandos to relieve the the situation. People did die. I was then found guilty in an international court I was found guilty of inciting a riot that resulted in the loss of human life. If God had not intervened through the government of Singapore, not ours, through the government of Singapore, I would not be here today. I would be in a prison somewhere in Indonesia because it was a life life sentence. I tried to explain to him, you have eternal life. You, You won't be around while I'll still be sitting there praising God. But anyway, they didn't see the humor in it. So <clears throat> that book is in the is in the back table. Through that whole thing, total calm. Why? Jesus is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me. Arrested by the KGB in Russia, Novosibirsk, carrying Bibles back up into the new science center they had put there. Heard a word, there were some young Christian believers back there. We went in through China, took the Trans-Siberian Railway across Mongolia, Went back there, delivered those Bibles to those people, came back to our hotel. I can't believe that cop actually, actually kicked the door in to make an emphasis in, in our room. I said, I was really crazy. Who is that? Now who's going to fix the door? I was dumb. What do you want? He said, Christianity, Bibles. Oh, okay. International offense. You know, you're in big, 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 big trouble. I thought, I'm not in any big, 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 big trouble. Jesus is praying for me. 
I know you don't understand that. I said to him, I understand. You don't understand. Why, why would you understand? No one's told you yet. Here, sit down. Let me tell you about this. Jesus lives at the right hand of the Father daily, making intercession for us. Don't let him get to you. No matter what news is thrown your way, no matter what threats are thrown your way, no matter what comes up in your face, always hold on to it with your mind. But I have prayed. Jesus said it. But I have prayed. And then he says, and when you have returned to me, ooh ah, ooh ah, how can somebody return? They have to leave to return. Revival is going to bring a great return. When you have returned to me, encourage these brethren. Be the encourager to these brethren. When you have returned, when you've come through the testing time, when you've come through the questioning of your faith, when you've come through the times where it's very awkward to make a Christian statement in a workplace or very awkward to stand for Christ in a situation. But when you come back and gain the strength because of his prayers, then encourage others. I'm starting a let's go back to church campaign. Let's get it. Come on, man. Isolate and destroy. That's a common tactic, isolate and destroy. Uh, people come up to me and I go to shake their hand. And they go, <laughs> I said, no, man, I'm from the tribe. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So if you've got it, I'll get rid of it and let's go on with it. Say, go on with it. Yeah, I need to. So revival in America is going to come with the restoration of truth. I believe that we should in our homes pray the Lord's Prayer every day with our family members, especially with our children. So they learn this thing. I thank God. In 1962, the Lord's Prayer was rejected. The only people who held on to it were the Catholics. And they called it the Our Father. And he said, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, right? And in 1969, upon which church did God pour out his Holy Spirit and start a revival? On the Roman Catholic Church, the Catholic Charismatic Movement. Why? Because they were still talking to him. They were still talking to him. The, Roman, the Catholic Charismatic Movement is today alive in 162 nations of the earth. Beijing hates the Catholic Church. Moscow hates the Catholic Church because those people would not stop talking to God. Stalin said, I will eliminate Christianity in Russia in one generation. He rounded up all these grandmas, terrorized by grandmas. Come on, how can you be terrorized by a grandma? Terrorized by, and sent them out to Siberia. When the wall came down, we received requests from Novosibirsk, New Siberia University, for 150,000 New Testaments. That's how many believers wanted the word of God in the midst of Siberia because those old ladies just kept praying and just kept praying and they kept praying and kept praying and they wouldn't stop praying and they taught the young people to pray and they taught those young people to pray and they taught the next young people to pray and by God, that's a power prayer. I mean, we need to start in our own lives. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I have abandoned the prayer that you taught us. I've gotten into all other kinds of prayer. I can, you know, I do pray you on the prayer seminar. I can be here three weeks, this kind of prayer, that kind of prayer, position of prayer, power of prayer, position of prayer, praise and prayer, prayer. I can, prayer. I wrote a book on it. It's back there too. But it's, yeah, prayer, yeah. But we abandon the one that Jesus said, when you pray, pray this way. Isn't that amazing? 
There are two things that hold the church together around the world. One is the Lord's Prayer. The second is the communion table. This is our common meal. We come together in the commonality. Now, the influence of the solidarity movement in my life, the influence of Christians under the oppression of the Russians the last time they tried this, the oppression of the Christians in Vietnam, the first people killed after the fall in Saigon in 75 were 1,500 Roman Catholic charismatic priests. They were lined up and killed. Do you know why? Because they could lay hands on the sick and they would recover. So as long as they could lay hands on the sick and they would recover, if you shot somebody to pray for them, they wouldn't die. And so the commies immediately had to eliminate this group of people. I was very fortunate to deliver John Osteen's book, Receive Ye the Holy Ghost, in the Vietnamese language, carry a few cases of those in, and relight the lampstand in the, in, among those priests, some, of the, some new priests that, who wanted to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Oh, I tell you, from what I've seen, I believe that the restoration of the Lord's Prayer in our personal lives, in our church life, will go into our children and will carry it back to a generation. I believe that, wholeheartedly believe that. And I believe that revival follows repentance and repentance follows a restoration of truth. Truth is restored, people see and hear the truth, people change their life in response to hearing that truth. They change their life, repent, and then they are revived. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You going to do it? Are you going to do it? Amen. Man, I have the hardest time doing it. It seems like a ritual to me. Honestly, I sit in my prayer closet. You know, I got my tambourines, got my horns, got my oil, got my stuff. This is too simple. Until I stop and say, our Father. You know that 73% of second-time offenders in prisons today come from a household with no father? Our Father. Did you know that? I just got all these new statistics. I'm really not one for statistics because of being of small brain, I can't really remember them all. But, but, you know, that's a lot of people. A lot of young people in trouble. Got no dad, don't know dad, don't know who dad was. Yeah, I was at, we were in Tibet. I was working, we were in, we've been in Tibet. We were in Tibet. I was up in a place called Nakchu, 17,000 feet up in the Himalayas. Very thin air. And um, it, there's a school there, and we had 26 cases of of uh, congenital heart disease in the school. So we took those 26 kids and we funded, uh, you all funded, I didn't fund anything, you all funded the, the treatment of those children. And um, all 26 lived. So I became somewhat of a VIP in the community. So taking advantage of VIP status, I brought a book that's published by Every Home for Christ, Dick Eastman, I brought up um, a children's picture Bible that was bilingual, Chinese and Tibetan. So the Tibetan kids could learn Chinese. That's the reason the school wants it. Man, that, that, these kids, they heard about Jesus. They heard about a heavenly father. Ooh, ah. They heard that the God, Tibetan kids, now think with me, Tibet, Himalaya Mountains. The God who made the mountains and the stars has a son. No way. Way. And his name is Jesus. Really? Yeah. And he was born miraculously to take your sin so that you can be one. That's karma. So that you can be one with his father. No way. That's the best news we ever heard. Well, here you go. So I went up a year later, check on our patients, make sure all the hearts were working, everything's cool, and came in there, and the, the headmaster of the school said, can I talk to you? I said, sure, what? 
So we stepped aside, went over actually in a dormitory. And the Chinese with the nomadic kids, you know, the, no, the nomads, he's a nomad, he lives in a yurt. They go all over Tibet following the flocks and herds. So they have no formal education. So the Chinese had set up these boarding schools so Tibetan nomad kids would be trained and receive an education for the future of Tibet is the way they sold it. All right, we'll buy that. And I sat with him and he said, you, you have orphan children, right? You take care, I, yeah, yeah, I have orphan, yes. We have hundreds of orphans in different countries, yeah. Maybe you can help me with something. I said, well, what, what can I do? He said, my, my kids, they have a really hard time getting to sleep at night. They're, they just can't settle in. They're like afraid. Really? He said, yeah. I said, well, you know, they could talk to God. What? Yeah, they could feel, they could, they could talk to God. They could feel his presence. They wouldn't be alone. They could feel that warmth and that comfort. You know, that's, we could do that. That's what we do with our kids in, the, in our children's homes. Greg, that's what we do with some of you here sponsor children in Cambodia. And we thank you for it. That's what we do. So then, you know, we snuggle them in and they can pray and they can, they can pray. Yeah. Well, well, how would it, how, you mean the Buddha know? Dalai Lama know? No, it just, look, it just goes this way. It's our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in Tibet as it is in heaven. In this room as it is in heaven. In this state as it is in heaven. On earth. Give us this day our daily bread. No anxiety about am I going to eat in the morning. There's no food deprivation. I've gone to God with it. He's going to supply. He'll supply. I'll put it in his hands. Lead me not into temptation. The boastful man says, I can stand on my own. The humble man says, lead me not into temptation. But deliver me from evil. There is an evil one. That's why these kids are feeling fear. So then we teach them, deliver me from evil. And then this is the part that the Chinese don't like. For thine is the kingdom. I mean, the Chinese Communist Party, the Chinese people. There are more first-generation Christians in China than there is population in the United States. Don't, 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 don't judge it all by one sourpuss. Come on. There's, there's, you've got some great people in China. Uh, yeah. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I said, try it. He's right. <laughs> Tibetan or Chinese doesn't matter. Either one, train them up. I came back a year later to check on our hearts. And by the way, we have 26 families. The church has grown through the testimony of those kids now. So we have hundreds of churches in that, in that prefecture, not true prefecture. In fact, the head of the prefecture government, I met with him one day and uh, I said, I'd like to give you a gift. He said, what's that? I said, well, I have this book. I'd like to give it to you. It was uh, Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. It was written in Chinese. We had a Chinese translation. I said, I'd just like to give this a gift. He said, is it going to change my way of thinking? I said, well, wouldn't you agree with me that any book worth its while will change your way of thinking? So when I saw him on this last trip, this subsequent trip, he's grinning from ear to ear. My life has been changed. I said, glory, good for you. I now appoint you apostle. No, I didn't. Uh, so, kids are sleeping. Kids are growing. Kids are in the word. Kids are praying the prayer, the power prayer that will change your world, that will sustain your world, that will keep your world in order, that will release the authority of heaven into the situations of earth. Uh, God did not say if the Democrats or if the Republicans. He said, if my people will turn, repent from their wicked ways. It was 1962. I was only, how old was I, 14 years old. I don't really recall the debates and how they managed to get the Lord's Prayer out of the schools. 
I, I don't really recall. I know it was a lady from Pennsylvania, but other than that, I don't know. And then I don't know how they get the Bible out of the school. It's one of the stupidest things anybody ever did. We're living in the consequence. We're in chaotic times. We're being sifted. But Jesus is at the right hand of the Father praying for us. And I have confidence that when we return to him, we will strengthen the rest of the brethren. I believe it. I can feel it in my bones. I believe revival is on the horizon. I tell you, we are living in the greatest day in the history of mankind. There will always be wars. There will always be rumors of wars. There will always be famine and pestilence. It's a promise. There will always be persecution. It's a promise of God. Jesus promised us we would be persecuted. So speak up. Speak up. Say Jesus. Watch the walls crumble. Say Jesus. A God, a higher power. I joined Alcoholics Anonymous because I was an alcoholic, right? Before I got delivered, right? So I could legitimately tell my alcoholic stories, right? Yeah. They'd say higher power. I'd say, are you talking about Jesus, right? You're, you are talking about Jesus Christ. The only deliverer. You, you are talking about Jesus. Well, you know, brother, we don't like to get into it. Oh, okay. Well, as long as I'm here, bro, till you put me out in the street, you're going to be hearing about Jesus Christ because he is the only name given under heaven whereby man must be saved. There is only one name, and that is the name of Jesus. And it's the name of Jesus that has to be proclaimed. And it has to be proclaimed by a people who truly believe that he is at the right hand of the Father. When I was hauled away, when it, 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 I'll blow my own book. They knock on the door. There's been a five-hour gunfight. They've set fire to the police station. They burned the car. They've done all the things. They effectively, the government flew in a helicopter to get us out of the situation. The helicopter had to pull back out because these Indonesian Muslims had an RPG, a rocket-propelled grenade, and they were afraid that they would shoot the helicopter down and get the machine guns from the helicopter. And so they came in and they went back out. And the commander came to me, the police chief, he said, did you hear the helicopter? I said, I heard the helicopter hit. He said, you know, they came in. I said, I heard them come in. And, but they had to pull out because who brings an RPG to a religious demonstration? You got to be nuts. They can kill a lot of people with that thing. You know, hoot and holler all you want to. Leave the guns at home. Man. So he said, but don't worry. I said, I'm not worried. <laughs> worried is what I'm not. I, I'm not worried. He said, the commandos are going to come and get us. Not your commandos, our commandos, the Indonesian commandos. I said, okay, all right, good. So just stay down on the floor. And they'll be here. It'll take about an hour for them to get here. Oh, okay. And then he said, now look, you guys have to stay down. And he showed me. They were changing the clips in their automatic weapons and going to live ammunition from the rubber bullets and the, that riot control stuff. Now we're live. Huh, I will stay down. Or behind a wall or something. I'll do something. Bam, man, the war went off. They fought, they fought, they fought. You could hear them shouting directions. You could, I mean, combat is horrendous. <sighs> Finally, it got quiet. You could smell the fear. You could hear the groans. There came a knock at the door. I opened the little people. There's a young Indonesian, no uniform. It, fear. It, it, the eyes, fear. I don't know if you've been through combat situations. The eyes. Nostrils flared, sweat, street dirt, AK-47. And he said, open the door. I said to the guys with me, three other guys in the cell, should I open the door? They said, well, they're going to just shoot through it anyhow. They're going to come and get us anyhow. So they might as well open the door. 
So, okay, so here we go. Open the door. Down comes the weapon. Right at the forehead, just right here. Are you Mr. Mark? I said, I am Mr. Mark. I, if I was thinking, I said, no, this is Mark over here. I'm, no. I said, laugh about it now. Yes, I am Mr. Mark. Are you a Christian? There's the picture. In the back of my mind, very gently, very gently. Confess me before man. I confess you before my father. Yes, I am a Christian. He said, good, so am I. We'll get you out of here. <laughs> I was ready to go to heaven, man. I was going to be in the front row. Martyrs go in the front row. It was going to be Andrew, Peter, James, me. Right in the front row. That's my front row seat. No, seriously. I had to go for counseling. Four sessions to overcome discouragement. And it, it, how come I didn't get to go? I mean, come on. Uh, heaven is 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles high. The throne is in the middle. You can make it to heaven and be 750 miles away from Jesus. I was going to be right with the martyrs. That's a front row seat. Dang. I said, what are you doing here? He said, I'm the only Christian. There are two of us. He said, but I'm in this group. I'm the only Christian in this, in this army here. And they sent me here to be killed. But Jesus has kept me alive. And so I asked if I could come in and get you. Lieutenant Muritano, still alive today, doing quite well. Muritano. Five days arrest. Uh, U.S. government called and said, you're a U.S. citizen. We understand there's a problem there. And I said, yeah. He said, well, please don't get us involved in it. Nothing we can do for you. I said, I, let me see, how was I going to vote next? And then one of the guys was a Singaporean. And the Singapore government called and said, you have 24 hours to release our citizen or we are going to come and get him. Now, here's this little island, seven by 14 miles. We are going to come and get him. And here is this massive country. Don't get us involved. And I said, there's something happening here. Anyway, just try to lock in on that. Was I afraid? Not really. I had a certainty. Why did I have a certainty? Because I know who is at the right hand of the Father. And I know he's praying for me. Do you know today? Have you given it over? Can you say, Lord, it's not what I do for you. It's what you're doing that I get to see. Have you surrendered to grace? Or are you still trying to work out your own salvation? Serving on a team in the church doesn't get you any closer to God. In fact, if it'll do anything, it'll cause you to wonder why in the world did you ever say yes to serve on the team? Uh, Mary had a little lamb, grew up to be a sheep, joined a charismatic church and died from lack of sleep. <laughs> if you've got a goat to get, you can bet God's got someone to get your goat. Yeah, church is about refinement. Church is about learning to love one another. Church is about holding on, not picking up a fence and feeding it and nurturing it so you finally quit and go. That's, that, 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 no, uh -uh. a fence has to be taken. It has to be picked up and nurtured. So will you join with me? Would you say today... Pastor Mark, thank you very much. I had totally forgotten the Lord's Prayer and the fact that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. And today I confess those two sins. Shall we bow our heads? Just if you want to make a confession today and just say, I confess 
I confess, I lost sight of God. Somewhere in the mix of things, I lost sight of, but I have prayed for you. If that's you today, just slip your hand up and down. Just slip your hand and down. This is a, a measure of my effectiveness, not yours. This is a measure of my communications abilities and not, not yours. I'm not judging you in any way, shape, or form. If you say, today I just need to draw closer to Jesus. I, 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 I've been rattled by the things around me. I, I've, I've lost confidence. If that's you today, I'd, I'd like to pray with you. And I'd like to ask the Lord to revive us. Put the zeal fire back in us. Put the confidence in Jesus Christ back in us. Take all compromise, all fear, all intimidation away from us. Revive us, O oh Lord. Revive us, Lord. Say it with me. Let's all spread it together. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I need revival. I really need revival. I made you too small for my eyes. Lord, forgive me. I have believed in a lie that you were unable to keep me. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Help me, Jesus. Make my heart strong. Make me an encourager. I return to you. Give me strength for my brothers. I return to you. Give me strength. Hallelujah. If you'd like to make a dedication commitment today, maybe you've been a Christian longer than I've been alive. I'm only 73. You'd like to make a, a dedication commitment. I invite you to come and stand with me here in the front and say, I want to be light. I want to be salt. I want to be a world changer. Would you do that? Come and stand with me. Would you do that? Just slip out from where you are and just come and stand with me and we will be the world changers. that anointing. I want to be a world changer. I want to be a world changer. I don't want the world to change me. I want to be a world changer. Hallelujah. As we wait upon the Lord. Come on, you can do it. I'm a flunky. I got thrown off, man. I was a bum. God loves to choose the weak things to confound the wise. God loves to choose the ones that are cast aside. The ones that don't fit. I haven't fit anything since I was 12. The ones who don't fit, the ones who, he wants you, he wants you, he wants you. It's an army of misfits, crackpots, hallelujah, junkies for Jesus. Amen. Hey, we're going to change the world. Huh? Yeah, we'll wait just a little longer, just a little longer for you, a little longer. You want to make that commitment and say, I'm going to be one of these 300 world changers, man. Time has not passed on me. I'm getting rejuvenated. I'm getting revived. I'm getting a revival. Hallelujah. There we go. That's good. That's good. That's good. Come on. I want to be one of the 300. The 300 is good, man. 300 is good. I'm going to hold just a little longer. Come on. I'm making my stand right here. Here I lift my Ebenezer. I'm making my stand. Father God, you see us. You know us. <laughs> you, know, you know our weaknesses. That's why we say lead us not in temptation. You know we're dependent on you. That's why we say... Deliver us from the evil one. 
You know that we desperately need your provision. That's why we say, give us this day our daily bread. And you know, Lord, we have a hard time for giving. We pick up a fence. We nurture it like a puppy. Repeat it. Clean up after it. Yeah. We forgive in Jesus' name. Say with me, in Jesus' name. I forgive every person, living or dead, who ever hurt me, used me, or abused me in any way. Lord, I release them to you. I ask you to forgive them. Bless them, Jesus. Bless them, Jesus. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Not my will, thy will. Not my will, thy will. Not the way I see it, the way you see it. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, Lord, look at us. Here were your kids. <laughs> we're your kids. We dare to believe, Jesus, that with you at the right hand of the Father, we cannot fail. We dare to believe, Jesus, that with you praying for us, we will conquer. We will be more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. We believe, we believe, I believe, we believe. No door is closed to us. No nation is closed to us. No people are closed to us. There is no place we cannot go and be sobre vencedores, more than overcomers. More than overcomers in every school, in every business, in every town, in every community, from this door to the ends of the earth, from this altar, we will go forth and proclaim the name without fear or shame, Jesus is Lord. Amen? Receive this day the unction to function as a world changer. I've got the unction to function. Hallelujah. I got the unction to function. I got the unction. Say it with me. I got the unction to function. I got the unction to function. I got the unction to function. I have all I need in Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, please turn around and take a look at the exit sign. See the exit sign? Outside that door, there are people who have been so shaken by world events, so shaken by political rhetoric, they don't know who to believe anymore. They don't. They're numb. They're numb. They've had it. They get, they're, they're numb. The sickness, they've been estranged from their very families, not allowed to visit, not allowed to go. I mean, the family unit is under attack. But we, have the unction to function. So I'll quote a very dear friend of mine as you look at that door. You ready? Go ye therefore into all the earth and proclaim the good news to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, making disciples of the nations and I will be with you everywhere you go now who could have said that go and have a great day don't go down yet all right I said, don't go down. Don't go anywhere. You know, the word testimony means do it again, Lord. Every aspect of all the testimonies that he gave, whether it was being in front of somebody asking about education or being in front of a cabinet member or any of the aspects of some of these testimonies and principles, we just say, do it again, Lord. Do it again in America, do it in Marietta, Parkersburg, Mid-Ohio Valley, do it in our nation. Create a holy boldness in us. Not that we and ourselves are invincible, 
but because Christ lives in us, Jesus lives in us, there's something invincible inside of us. This man is going to Guatemala on Tuesday. We want to send him as a church, so would you stand up, please? And if you felt like, I want to sow into what he's doing, his word that he's proclaiming, you didn't get an opportunity to do it earlier, if I could have Raymond put a basket back there for us, that you can do that in addition, make sure you buy or get whatever back on that table, any of his materials as well. It's been an incredible message. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for imparting your life to us. Father, as we stand here in a, a holy moment, because you are here, not one of your promises have ever failed. And Father, I thank you that as you send your laborers, Lord, into their next assignment, we just thank you that favor, blessing, provision, protection, angelic host would go with our dear brother Mark. Lord, maybe he'll have divine, he probably will have divine appointments that he's not even aware of at this point. We thank you that you are the Isaiah 22, 22 God that opens doors that no man can close. And Lord, I thank you that you have already got doors lined up to be opened, words to be spoken, lives to be transformed. Your kingdom come, your will being done on the earth as it is in heaven. So Lord, we just bless Mark. We just bless SEAPC and their family of co-laborers around the world. Lord, would you continue Lord, to encourage and strengthen and bring great provision, supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles working, Lord, through their lives. We thank you for the generations now that are being released. And Lord, I just thank you for a generational momentum that would continue, Lord, not only through Mark's natural family, but Lord, through his spiritual family that you have given him over these many years to your glory and your honor. And to each one up here today that just stood and said, I want to be a world changer. I want that presence of God working powerfully in my life. Lord, I ask that you would just respond so powerfully this week as you always do and strengthen and lead and guide. And we just declare over this house, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. And everyone said together, amen. If you want to meet Mark personally, he's not running to some green room in the back. He'll be right down here or out by his table. Just come and, and uh, greet him in the Lord. And it's good to see everyone today. As Mark said, go into your harvest field. Amen.